Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. We're bringing to you the winners of the Time Making India Awards. Joining me today on this special panel, the winners, Yogesh Agarwal, the Managing Director of Ajanta Pharma. Also joining us, Rajesh Agarwal, the Joint Managing Director of Ajanta Pharma. Shankar Narayanan, the Managing Director of Carlisle in India. Norman Perlstein, the Chief Content Officer at Time Inc. Appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Congratulations, Yogesh and Rajesh, on winning the Making India Awards. Award, but let me start by asking you about uh, you know what the journey has been so far and if I would ask you about prescriptive ideas on what would would it take to make make in India truly successful I mean we've had this manufacturing target of 25 percent of GDP for over a decade now and we know where we currently are today so in terms of follow-through action on part of the government what needs to be done to really make make in India a reality so the journey has been very exciting. The company was started 40 years back. It was started by my father and his two uh, brothers, my uncles. Uh, until a uh, decade back, uh, they were heading the company. So myself and Rajesh, we stepped in uh, 10 years back and started to head the company. It's been an exciting journey to uh, take the company from a base of 70 crores to this year. We'll be closing at 1,700 crores plus. Uh, growing uh, all across in India uh, in uh, various th uh, therapeutic segments of ophthalmology, cardiology and dermatology and having a footprint in Africa, uh, West Asia and now in uh, US. So it's been an exciting journey and uh, we are very thrilled to be uh, winners of this uh, prestigious uh, time award to have been selected amongst the 3,000 participants uh, and to make it to the mm -hmm. finalist and then finally to be chosen the winner it means a great deal to us. Uh, so coming to the make in India, uh, uh, I, I believe I, I look at the glass to be a glass full, half full. Uh, I would like to believe okay. that uh, we have the necessary elements, uh, uh, necessary ingredients to make it uh, successful. If I just look at from the pharmaceutical industry perspective, we have come a long way. Uh, we have truly evolved as a true generic player. Now we are getting into the, into the complex uh, uh, specialty product uh, range. I am talking as an industry in general, so we are getting to the bi biosimilars right. and things like that. And there are a number of companies who have uh, started to work on the new chemical compounds, uh, NCEs. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is, uh, that is going to probably in the next three to five years, something should come out from the, from the Indian pharmaceutical industry. So uh, I think what it requires is uh, I think the right environment, the right regulations. Uh, and when I say about regulations, I am talking about the broad general terms, uh, which is company law. Uh, taxation, so on and so forth. Uh, I see the things to be going in the right direction uh, with the present government, uh, taking all the necessary steps. So you're saying that you see things going in the right direction, uh, Yogesh, but uh, Rajesh, let me take that point forward and ask you, uh, you know, we're seeing a lot of attempts being made by the government, whether it's through uh, duties, whether it's customs duty in specific now, to actually disincentivize imports and push manufacturers to actually make in India. Now, there are two schools of thought. Uh, you know, one believes that this is actually a good way to get manufacturers to set up manufacturing facilities here in India. And there's another school of thought that says that this actually disincentivizes people because it actually makes it more restrictive and constrains them from making in India. Uh, how would you uh, look at this debate that's currently underway? And we've just seen recent moves, for instance, in the pharma sector as far as customs duty on bulk drug imports are concerned. Uh, to me, Shireen, I think it's a positive move uh, by the government to uh, really push India, push people to manufacture in India. If you look at, uh, if you look at. Uh, uh, many industries let's say look at the growth of india which is supposed to grow or projected to grow at over seven percent and which has been growing over seven percent for the last decade or so so that opens up huge avenues and in the consumption industries like food and beverages uh -huh. if you manufacture here or electronics we have seen uh, sony simmons announcing uh, big plans to start manufacturing bases in india so uh, to me it's a positive thing and uh, if uh, this happens it will uh, feed the working population, which is supposed to be at over 64 percent of the Indian population at working age in the next uh, three to four years. So it will uh, uh, produce a lot of jobs, which will be good for the country and uh, help accelerate the GDP. Uh, as far as the pharma is concerned, uh, uh, pardon, as far as the pharma yeah. is concerned, uh, again, uh, we have seen that uh, the Indian pharmaceutical companies, so to speak, were the first uh, to really uh, take the Indian flag in the uh, international markets uh, much ahead of the IT industry mm. also uh, per se. Mm. 
and uh, you know you saw when Baxi, erstwhile when Baxi, which really uh, uh, marketed the drugs and CIPLAs uh, internationally in every country that you uh, went to, whether it was Peru or Ecuador or Philippines or uh, you know Taiwan for that matter. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, so pharma companies, uh, uh, Indian pharma industry is uh, accelerating, and of course, as it is said, it's the uh, world pharmacy, uh, pharmacy to the world. And uh, mm -hmm. I think there is uh, uh, greater things to come for the industry in uh, near future. Okay. Uh, Shankar, let me ask you, you know, as you evaluated the, the 3,000 applicants for the Make in India Awards, the final shortlist and of course the final nine who won, uh, what have been the interesting insights to your mind? Uh, I wasn't part of the evaluation process, but um, uh, mm -hmm. I can talk in more general terms. Um, I think Make in India is a good initiative. Uh, I think it is positive because I think the country has got uh, the basic raw material uh, to make it succeed uh, because eventually it's free markets that have taken people out of poverty more than any other system and uh, free markets is a method of rewarding human creativity and ingenuity uh, uh, over a period of time. Uh, but it is very important uh, for us to realize that the world is a marketplace. Over a period of time uh, Companies that have had protection based on tariff or non-tariff barriers eventually have not succeeded in the world as a marketplace. Mm. If you see the success of India in the services space, uh, especially software, BPO, etc., uh, more than the labor arbitrage, it is the ability of a lot of companies to take a process which is done in any OECD country and do it better. Right. Because today in the global marketplace, every corporate or company in an OECD country has to make a product mm. or <coughs> service, they have to give their customers year after year a better product or a better service at a cheaper price and grow their earnings. Mm. So productivity gains becomes very, very important for global corporations. So Indian companies that have succeeded in the services space are companies that are able to take a service and do it better. What, and what, by, what I mean by better is automated more, so they are able to do it faster, right. they are able to do it with lesser mistake. The labor arbitrage is probably an added bonus. And if we have the same approach in going into this Make in India, uh, we can become a very, very successful nation in Make in India. So it is not eventually these tariff or non-tariff barriers that would protect us. It is the R&D, it is the ability to do these things in a sophisticated way using the intellectual capital right. that has been the strength of the country that will help. I think we have the raw materials. I think this government has the right ideas. I think they know w what are the bottlenecks that could constrain this, you know, infrastructure issues. I think they are addressing very aggressively, whether it is roads or pass, uh, the pass sector, etc. Mm. Uh, I think there is still probably uh, vestiges of red tape and bureaucracy, which I think the government is very alert. Some of these things may take a little time to do. These are the things that may be a drag on competitiveness. I think GST would be a big help, mm. uh, uh, you know, uh, as and when it happens. So I think we have the raw materials to make India a powerful manufacturing nation. Uh, I don't think it will happen by the wave of a magic man suddenly overnight, but mm. uh, <coughs> I, I, I think this thing could make over a 5, 10, 15 year period, uh, India to be one of the most powerful manufacturing uh, nations in the world. And as Carlyle, we have invested in companies like this, like we invested in a piping company called D-Piping, uh, very, very sophisticated piping systems they could make, and they could make it as good or better than anyone in the world. Uh, in Scient, mm. which is a listed company, uh, you know, it does a lot of uh, aviation <coughs> and defense, you know, complex electronic systems, etc. So it is happening, and investors like us can be a catalyst uh, in helping these companies scale up. Norman, let me ask you, uh, uh, you know, Shankar was talking about the India advantage and the India competitiveness. Uh, 
you know, at this point in time where global markets are uh, access to capital and so on and so forth, we already know and we've articulated very clearly about the infrastructure deficit in India. What would you say would be the competitive edge that India enjoys and needs to leverage even further? Well, I, I share uh, Shankar's view that to a very large degree it's, 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 it's the Indian people, it's the passion for innovation, it's the ambition, uh, the work ethic. Um, in addition to being here to celebrate Indian Manufacturing Time Inc. Has, is quadrupling its, uh, its own employment in India, in Bangalore, going from about 250 people two years ago to a thousand by the end of this year and it's not so much because of the economics as it is about the quality of of the workforce and the dedication of the people we've been able to uh, to attract to the company um, I, I think that uh, you know in working on this awards program with our our knowledge partner McKinsey um, I think we uncovered really across the board companies in every sector that are doing extraordinary world-class work and uh, perhaps um, my colleague from McKinsey, Anu Madgavkar, who's uh, with us here, might be willing to comment a little bit about that. Anu, you want to chip in? Uh, sure. Uh, I, I, I think we are actually uh, quite optimistic and we do think that uh, the idea of Make in India has come at an opportune time. Uh, in terms of what's happening globally to manufacturing. So if you just thought about the last 20 years, I think that was shaped very much by global supply chains evolving and a lot of manufacturing investment and jobs moving offshore in the pursuit of low cost labor. And I think what's happening now and will happen over the next decade or more is that uh, a lot of those investment dollars are going to be located where there are two things. One is the emergence of stronger and stronger demand. So where demand is growing. Right. And then the second is where there is, uh, you know, innovation uh, or the ability of the talent pool and the ecosystem to really embrace what technology is doing to reshape manufacturing. And if you just look at, uh, I, I think by our numbers, more than 90% of recent global capital expenditure in, let's say, the automotive sector has actually gone to either new geographies and new markets, so that's in pursuit of demand, or it's gone to um, support a sort of proliferation of product variants, which again are sort of symbolic of the fact that you need to innovate new offerings to satisfy, you know, slivers of customers who are emerging for the first time. And I think on both these dimensions, in terms of demand as well as in terms of the ability to um, really adopt technology uh, in, a, in a very local context specific way. I think India definitely has the ability to do that. Uh, and there are a range of sectors across, as I said, auto, auto components, we've talked about pharma, we've talked about food and beverages, uh, specialty chemicals, a range of sectors where uh, this could well be a sort of perfect storm of both these elements coming together for India. I think there are a couple other things that yeah, might, know. if I might jump yes. in, I might mentioned. Uh, one is there is a tendency, I think, w in talking about this to look at what is government doing, what is government policy, is it stimulative, is it restrictive. Yet what I think really uh, the Make in India project shows is the initiative and the innovation of individual companies and of uh, the executives who run them. Uh, one of our other uh, award winners, uh, Tata Steel, has clearly shown that it is a world-class competitor that who is able to be profitable and efficient in markets where others are unable to be. And I think that's very much a function of uh, the Tata Group and the principles that uh, really govern the companies that are a part of it. And that was one of the things that I think we recognized in, in selecting it. Uh, you know, Yogesh and Rajesh, let me ask you this. I just finished having a conversation with Safra Katz of Oracle, and, and uh, they have the largest number of employees here in India outside of the U.S. at about 40,000. They're investing another $400 million here in India to set up another uh, center, and they're setting up nine incubation centers. Uh, all of their product lines are now actually developed here in India, so they, she calls it the front office for Oracle. Uh, and this is a far cry from people using India as, as the back office in that sense. Uh, you know, so how important is it going to be, this marriage of IP and innovation? Uh, and give us your example, for instance, uh, what you intend doing, what could be the future as far as R&D spending is concerned. How important is it going to be for us to be ahead of the curve as far as IP and innovation is concerned from a Make in India perspective? 
perspective. Uh, no, clearly, uh, the IP is the most important element uh, when, you, when it comes to the innovation. Uh, any company or uh, any entity which does the research uh, and when they come out with uh, certain IP uh, things, so they, they want the protection for that. And fortunately, which we have seen in India is now the IP protection is pretty high. I see that in pharmaceutical industry uh, from 2005 onwards, uh, there's a tremendous IP protection for any innovation which is done here or been done outside, but then it is brought here and patent area. So there are a number of uh, cases where a number of molecules are being sold in India, uh, which are under patent and they will be, uh, and they have the monopoly right now. There's no other players which are uh, selling those product. Uh, so uh, I think uh, again, coming back, uh, the essence uh, for the success uh, for the make in India will be mixed element of lot of things. Innovation truly is going to be the central of that. Uh, the productivity, uh, as rightly Shankar said, I think uh, you can't depend on the government incentives or disincentives <coughs> to make your business models. Uh, ultimately, it no, will. But what about things like more patent offices? What about things like commercial courts and so on and so forth? Uh, we are catching up. We are catching up. Uh, uh, I think uh, from the uh, situation where we had a very weak patent regime, uh, very low staff patent offices. Now we see uh, the patents are being granted at much faster speed. Uh, and uh, there's a significant improvement in that. So I'm optimistic uh, about where the way things are shaping up <coughs> and the way uh, uh, IP protection is uh, being uh, provided to the Indian companies or MNCs. Anyone who does the innovation, uh, I think they should be rewarded by giving that IP protection. And uh, to answer the second part of your question, uh, so in as far as Ajanta Pharma is concerned, we have had 5% uh, of our uh, spent to the sales on R&D. Uh, in the current year and which we hope to increase it to even 7% in the next year or year and a half. So as far as pharma is concerned uh, and Ajanta Pharma is concerned, uh, we are spending a decent amount of our sales on the uh, research and development front and on innovation. Okay, Shankar, you know, eventually it boils down to putting your money where your mouth is and where we're all excited and, and optimistic about the Make in India story. But anything in specific, any sectors in specific that you're looking at at this point in time in terms of being able to deploy capital and also this business of making in India but really creating for the world, what are those stories that you're going to be watching out for? See, we have probably one of the best pipeline. I've been, this is my 12th year in Carlisle, and it's probably one of the best pipelines uh, in terms of deal flow that we've had. And, uh, you know, Carlisle has about 200 billion under management, and we have a huge network of our portfolio companies, relationships, etc. And for a lot of these companies, we can be like a catalyst in their transformation. We can help them grow their business. Uh, we can get them access for business development. We can help them buy companies, etc. And uh, like I told you, I was uh, on the board of a company called Scient. They have 14,000 engineers worldwide. Uh, they designed, uh, you know, Pratt and Etnies, literally noiseless engine. They did 26, 27% of the IP. Uh, they have a manufacturing business uh, in avionics and electronics uh, called Rangsense, which uh, they had acquired. Uh, I mentioned deep piping earlier, you know, that makes complex piping systems. Uh, they make oh. it uh, outside the of Delhi and Faridabad and ship it uh, all over the world. Uh, so increasingly we are seeing a lot of these business where the Indian entrepreneur, you know, literally with his drive and hunger for success has created a base, you know, the company has a base where, you know, uh, global private equity funds like Carlyle can come in and use the power of its network, its relationships, its knowledge, mm. uh, you know, Norm, uh, uh, for example, used to be uh, a senior advisor with Carlyle before and uh, in certain areas, uh, you know, there's one of my portfolio companies, I go to him for help to see if it could do work uh, uh, for others. So this is the kind of transformation uh, that will help. And uh, where again to reiterate the government can help is reduce friction in them operating because uh, when Car we invested right. in a very successful dairy company called Thirumala, you know, it created 50,000 mm. farmers we used to buy milk from. We created a lot of uh, value added products. So a small amount of capital has a huge multiplier on the economy because it creates jobs. We pay a lot of direct taxes uh, because the people who have incomes pay taxes, a lot of indirect taxes and it has a huge multiplier creative effect on the economy. I know, uh, let me ask you, you know, as you've been looking at the nominees that have come in and of course the final list of winners, uh, any interesting takeaways there, whether it's on the efficient use of capital, you know, there's been a lot of talk uh, and emphasis on frugal engineering, for instance, on frugal innovation. Uh, how, what has that meant when you compare it to global benchmarks? 
I think as we looked at uh, the range of companies through this process, what was particularly interesting about them was that you could see signs of innovation right across the value chain. So we've talked today a bit about uh, you know innovation in product design and R&D, which is quite very fundamental. But actually, there are also huge, uh, there is huge potential for innovation to add value and productivity, as Shankar said, uh, pretty much throughout. So as you think about working with a smaller manufacturers in the supply chain, in the ecosystem, to actually boost their capabilities. Or as you think about digitizing elements of your downstream, you know, mm -hmm. B2B distribution, uh, we, one third of global B2B sales today are actually online and are <coughs> digital. And the question is, you know, are you really seeing Indian companies embracing uh, elements like that? to streamline inventory or to streamline sales. And we found a huge amount of attention being paid to these levers, so levers of operational efficiency. And uh, we would okay. think that these elements of innovation are as important as the more fundamental product related ones. Oh, absolutely. The business uh, process innovation as well is, uh, is what we ought to focus on. But uh, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you, Yogesh and Rajesh. Congratulations right. on winning the Make in India Awards. We Thank wish you, you so the much. very best of luck. Shankar, Norman and Anu, thanks very much for joining us here on this conversation on what it will take to make in India a reality and a success. Uh, from all of us here for now, many thanks for watching.